Okay, so today we're going to be using the displacer deformer with shaders to create a looping animation similar to this one I posted on my Instagram account. I'll show you how we can adapt this technique to create lots of variation and the best part is it's done with no keyframes. Please let me know in the comments below if there are any other Cinema 4D techniques you're interested in and I'll try and look at those in future tutorials. But stick around to the end of this video and you'll see my final scene set up with uh, Octane Render. Okay, so let's get started. So in Cinema 4D, what I'm first going to do is bring in our torus shape. Um, I'm going to turn on the guard shading with lines just so we can see our polygons. Uh, I'm going to change the size of this slightly. I'm going to make this a radius of 160 and I'm going to change the pipe radius to around 70. So we've got this kind of fatter shape to start with. Now we need to up the detail on this, so add in the display so we need more polygons to be able to show up more detail. Um, but if we up the detail of the torus quite high, um, that can get quite slow. And then we keep needing to adjust these um, to, to be able to play back quicker. So what we can do to make this faster is put this into a subdivision surface. And I wall up these a little bit. I'm going to change this to about 80 and this to 20. And that's just to give us these square uh, polygons. So we've got a nice even mesh. Okay, so what I'm going to do next is stick that into a group. And I'm going to name that Displacer. Uh, I'm going to call this Sub D. That's Displacer Taurus. Uh, and now we can add our Displacer in. Now where we want to put that is in the group underneath the uh, subdivision surface. Now uh, automatically we have the shading tab selected and that's the one we're going to play with. We uh, click on shader and we're going to add a noise. Now instantly we can see the, uh, the standard noise being applied. I'm going to change the display to guard shading and we're going to go into the noise and this is where we're going to basically drive all of our animation and the look of this. Okay so I'm first going to I mean you've got lots of options and noise here and we're going to play with these later on and what they do once we've kind of defined the look a bit better but um, I'm going to change this to Voronoi 1 which is the one I used in the Instagram post. I'm going to change the global scale up to about 500% and you can see we're already getting some of that detail in there and then I'm going to change the contrast up because what we want to do is bring out those circles rather than these um, less defined shapes. So if I up the contrast, you can see them popping out until we get here. Now this looks kind of a bit rough around the edges. So what we're going to do is add in another deformer, which is the smoothing. We can add that on. Now we want to actually put that underneath the displacer because the hierarchy matters. So we're, we don't want to be smoothing the sub D, we want to be smoothing the sub D after it's been displaced. I'm going to change this to about 50. And I think what we need to do is actually up the subdivision so we get more definition. There you go. So even there we can see these pockets sticking out. We press play, nothing happens at the moment. What I'm going to do is actually um, on my render settings just change this quickly to be 25 frames per second. And in my project settings, change that to 25 and this to 100. I just like to make sure that everything's set up in the same. So I'm basically doing a four second loop, 25 frames per second. Now all of our animation is going to be driven by the noise within the displacer shader. So if we go into the noise, the two settings we're going to look at are the animation speed and the loop period. Now if we just change the animation speed to one and the loop period to four, now four is just number of seconds so obviously we've got four second loop so we're just putting four seconds in now if we start playing we can see that the an animation is already working the first and last frame will be the same so when it comes to rendering we just won't render out the last frame it's running slow at the minute if you wanted to kind of play back quicker you could just change this just to get a rough idea of how it's looking but obviously when it comes to rendering you want to up these now what we want to do is get the reverse side. We want to get on, like on this example, these red dots that are inside the yellow filling in the space. So to do that is pretty simple. What we're going to do is take the displacer, this whole setup we've done already, we'll call this torus, um, torus positive. 
second spell. And then what we're going to do is just duplicate that. And we're going to call this one negative. And then we can just go into this displacer for our negative displacer. And we're going to change two things, which is these colors. We're going to change the black to white and the white to black. Okay, so one thing I'm going to do before we move on is just go into the original displacer and I'm just going to change the brightness of this noise slightly to kind of tighten that up a little bit. And then I'm also going to go back up and to the object tab and I'm going to change the height slightly. I'm going to bring that down so these dots are kind of sticking out more, these blobby dots, maybe a little bit more than that. Okay, so now we're kind of at a point where we were with the Instagram post with this animation. I mean, I did have a twist deformer around the whole uh, donut shape, which I'm uh, moving through 10 or 20 degrees for a twist, just to add an additional piece of animation. But you've basically got the, uh, the, we've already got this kind of blobby animation working now, okay? But now we're at a point where we can have a play around. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is just create a simple cinema material. Actually, I'm just gonna leave it white, stick that on the negative just so we can see what's going on in our animation. Now what we can do to amend the look of this so you can kind of personalize it yourself and probably spend hours playing around is uh, we select both displacers at the same time and then click on the noise. We can amend all of the options for both displacers. What we don't want to change is the color one and two though because we've got one set to white and black, one set to black and white. So if we change that, it's gonna change it for both which is gonna mess it all up. But what we can do in here is change things like the noise type, the space, um, the size. Uh, what we'll probably start off with is down here with cycles and absolute. So with the Voronoi 1 that I've currently got in, on here, if I take the cycles up to 2, you see it just adds additional levels of detail to that noise we already had. Now if we add absolute, it adds even more. Then we can make that more interesting maybe by upping the scale, get these great big shapes. And then we can do something like change the space from texture, which wraps it around to UV 2D. We get these crazy shapes going on. So you can see how we can add additional smoothing on to clean this up, but how we can end up with some really nice like ab abstract animations. If I take this back to being the texture, uh, we can do something like changing the relative scale in different directions, so for our X, Y, and Z. So if I just up this to something crazy, you can see there that the, the objects are now being wrapped around, so we get a different kind of effect. So you can see, you can then take something like the noise and all these amends you can do, you can do all, to all the different types of noise. So let's, oh, that's the one we're currently on. Let's go Voronoi 2. See what we've got. That's free. See, that one's got these more angular shapes. I'll take this back down to something like a thousand. It's back down to a hundred. So you've got these crazy shapes going on. So you can have a lot of fun just playing around with all these different noises and seeing what effects you can come up with. Uh, the one thing to look out for though is some noises, so pick this one like electric, it looks pretty cool, but it's, it doesn't have a loop period, it doesn't allow you to be able to actually loop the animation. So be careful of that, is that some of these animations do not have the ability to be able to be looped perfectly. Okay, so what we'll do now is we'll just try and make this look a bit prettier and set this up for final render in Octane. So I'm going to go back to the Voronoi one that I quite liked. I'm gonna tweak this a little actually. I think I, I kind of like the big bold shapes. I might actually change this scale. I kind of like it wrapping around like that. And then this noise on the edge. Now we've, we've the subdivision is already set at free, which is reasonably high. You could up that, but I think a problem you might run into is that it adds too much detail in and see you still got these it's, it's just accentuating this roughness we've got here i'm going to put that back down to free and go back to the displacer 
and what I'm going to play with is the contrast and the high clip on here because it was so contrasty to begin with I think that's why we're getting this uh, these lines in here so if I bring this down a little bit you can see there it's smoothing it all out change and then look you can change the high clip there too see I'm going to bring it out so I can bring out that little bit of detail so then we've got this nice smooth shape and it's going to animate and loop okay so now let's take this into octane so here we are with the octane live viewer open on the right and i've set up a very simple scene i've just got this stage object in the background which is just a couple of splines lofted between themselves um, i have a hdri image which is just driving our light an octane camera and then i've got the um, octane renderer set to path tracing so we get this kind of nice look so I think basically now we're just set to render and uh, I'll show you the final result. So thank you for watching. Let me know in the comments below if you found this helpful and please remember to like and subscribe if you want to see more. I will see you next time. Bye.